YouTubers, welcome back to Maxwell Stars Beer Review. Tonight we're going to take a look at one of the bought beers from Antwerp, Belgium, the famous Deconic Special Belge. It is a Belgian style pale ale, 5% uh, ABV. It says it's an amber on the front, but it can also be called a pale ale, mainly because pale is a term commonly used for beers that are, um, you know, other than dark, because uh, pale malts were, ah, eh, whatever, you got to read into the malts and stuff. Uh, it says, uh, Deconic, 1833 is when the brewery was founded. An interesting story about the hand logo they use on the beer and on the cap and on the back of the bottle is that uh, when the brewery first opened, the location of the brewery that Deconic built um, was originally an inn. And in, across the street in front of the inn, there used to be a, 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 a turnstile, a sign with a hand on it that uh, basically was a symbol for all passing people that they needed to pay a toll to enter. Um, after a while, when the brewery first opened, the uh, first original name for the brewery was De Hand, which was named after, of course, that signpost in front of it. Apparently that original signpost is st can still be seen at the Deconic Brewery. So it's just a little bit of an interesting fact out there. Uh, this is beer, beer, ale, bira, starkel, olut. A whole bunch of stuff in different languages. No real interesting stories, and... Uh, You know what, I'm hoping that this is still good, but uh, it says best before uh, <laughs> uh, 18511, so it's, it's either, it either expired on May 18th, 2011, which is shortly after I started doing reviews, or <laughs> um, it's, uh, April, it's May 11th, 2018, which I doubt very much a Deconic lasts that long, it's not like it's Chimay or anything. Well, we'll uh, have to crack it open. Usually Belgians have a long shelf life, so let's pop it open and uh, let's take a look see if she's any good. Anyway, closer look at the nice little green gold cap there with the uh, with the hand logo on the front. Pop that over there. And put it in my little sniffer glass. So it looks like it's coming out with like a, a toffee, toffee brown, reddish appearance. It's red in your light. If you're not looking at it light directly, it's kind of like this brown gold kind of color. Yeah, it's very almost, it's amber, but it's, it's, it's almost orange. And the head originally came up to be about a finger, now it's died to a half finger. Although it's rather, it's rather creamy looking. And uh, it's got like a, a brownish appearance. Hmm. Either way, it's a very nice looking Belgian beer. Up towards the top where the glass is thicker, it's taking on a very red appearance. Which is really nice. Let's see if I can get this under a bit of light on my stove here. So yeah, it comes out as an orange down at the bottom. And there's little traces of carbonation up along the sides of the glass. I'll bring it over here, I can see them real good here. Well, they were nicer on your side, damn it. The head's really nice. I mean, it's dialed up, died, died down to this nice oil slip kind of appearance. It's sticking to the sides a little bit, but it's dissipating. I don't think that's going to leave a lot of residual lacing, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a ring that stays after a while, but it seems to die off a little. Either way, it's a very nice looking beer. It's kind of pretty, actually. Let's give it a sniff. It's got a yeasty musk kind of smell, but it's it's also got this a nutty malt smell. And a tad bit on the fruity side. Like, we've got traces of, um, of banana in there. Maybe a touch of like a, a red fruit, like an apple. Hmm. It's not like it's very strong or pronounced. It's you don't smell any alcohol in that either, which is good. There's no discernible hop aroma in there either. It's just basically this standard very faint light malt smell with a nut, a little bit of a, a nutty twang to it. Cease 
It's almost like a little apricot -y. Hmm. Maybe a little woody. No ingredients list. Anyway, let's uh, give it a taste. Hmm. So there's a little bit of a malty sweetness to the front of the tongue. Fades into the back, into the uh, the middle of the tongue. This nice residual, pleasing sweetness. But it's not like an overly sweet thing. Like it's got that kind of sweetness that was in the in the smell, like a light banana, light fruity taste, um, with that nice woody, nutty kind of flavor. And it cut, it hits you in the back of the palate with this this earthy kind of bitterness. And there's also traces of spice in there as well. And I'm picking up like some faint coriander. I don't use a little lot. And the bit the sweetness lingers a little bit in the back where it's it's got this very it's it's not a heavy sweetness. It's not like an overly noticeable malt sweetness. It's like this light amount of almost watery um, like toffee sweetness with some red fruits. And you almost get a trace of alcohol in the back. Although as I get more, I'm not noticing it as much. Hmm. It's very easy drinking though. It doesn't finish perfectly dry, but it's nice, it's got a nice lingering aftertaste. Hmm. It's not bad. Um, it's kind of like a medium bodied beer. Maybe a little lighter than medium. It's not like a heavy bo heavy bodied beer by any means. So it and it also has this, this creamy finish to it that's very satisfying and it, it makes it quite easy to drink. Mmm. Yeah, look at that. Let's see if we can kick up some more head here. Nice it sloshes around real nice, but like I suspected, it's that lacing isn't really sticking to the sides of the glass. It's just, I mean, more so now that I've gotten a lot of head on this thing. It's just that uh, it's not really like a very sticky beer. Sometimes it's a good thing. It's a very satisfying, like toffee and caramel taste to the back. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to sit down with this one for a bit and uh, I'll come back with some thoughts. I'll be right back. with this one it's actually quite nice as it warmed up I started to get um, just a more of like a, a barely noticeable cinnamon note on the very tip of the tongue but for the most part it's got this nice malty taste where it's got some red fruit flavors it's got some uh, a nice um, toffee taste to it as well as it's got this uh, little bit of a woody kind of, uh, uh, of uh, nutty kind of taste to the, uh, to the very back of the palate um, other than that, there's no real discernible hot qualities other than just an earthy bitterness. But it really is smooth and really goes down well. You could probably drink a quite a few of these uh, quite, quite easily, even though it is a little bit more expensive than your standard beer around here. But it's not in, like a, a, an intensely great beer. It's just an easy drinking good beer. Um, Belgians are always great beers anyway. I think I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5, just because it's it's really good, really nice, um, but it's it's not a, like doesn't really stand up their white list of, like the Affligan or uh, like your uh, your Trappist triples or something or other fantastic beers of the style. But you know what? It's actually a really really nice beer. Um, so yeah, I think that 3.5 out of 5 is uh, rather well deserved. Anyway. 
Thanks for watching Maxwell Stairs Beer Review. Hope you enjoyed watching this review and uh, you're not throwing your mouse at the monitor. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.